live from the Salvation Army National Headquarters, this is the Fight for Good podcast. Well, hi, everybody. Happy New Year and welcome to the Fight for Good podcast. I'm your host, Lieutenant Colonel Tim Foley. We're coming to you from National Headquarters in Alexandria, Virginia of the Salvation Army as we're starting the new year 2021. With me here today is our War Cry Editorial Director, Mr. Jeff McDonald. Greetings to you, Mr. McDonald. Good morning, Colonel. Happy New Year. If I may, I've been reading about Helen Keller's friendship with Mark Twain. Of course, Helen Keller overcame, you know, deafness, blindness, et cetera, uh, to uh, become a beloved figure in our culture. She would hold Mark, you know, put her finger, uh, hands on Mark Twain's face as he read stories so she could hear his, you know, uh, sense his, his voice. She said of that friendship, so long as the memory of certain beloved friends lives in my heart, I shall say that life is good. Wow. I, uh, that's, that is, <laughs> that's powerful. And that's so true. Hey, thanks for, I, I appreciate, you know, we're kind of joking around a, a few podcasts ago, you started introducing these little quotes. And uh, now I think our listeners and myself, I'm, I'm, I'm looking forward to them because we, you don't even share it ahead of time. So uh, that one just kind of hit me like, you know, yeah, the memory yeah. is really, really strong. Also with us today is our producer, Elizabeth. Good morning, Elizabeth. Good morning. So just a little behind the scenes. We actually recorded this uh, before uh, the new year, and we had all kinds of glitches with our original recording. And uh, I won't I'll, I won't bore you with all of the details, uh, but we had to do a redo uh, of this whole podcast. We had, had put together a really lovely one and, and then it just didn't work out. So we're, we're kind of rebooting it and we are in, uh, we are in the new year and we are continuing, uh, to work remotely, uh, at national headquarters. There's, uh, uh we're following the COVID protocols in the state of Virginia and, um, all, all of our crew is, is working remotely. And at the same time, our building, uh, continues to go through a massive remodel. So uh, we're, we're looking forward to eventually getting back to our offices. I know, uh, Jeff, the, the few few times I've been able to see you in person, it's been a, it's been a great joy. I know. There's nothing, you can't replace that, you know, interaction in person. We miss it, um, but we're carrying on, thankfully, thanks to technology, thanks to the provision of the Army. Well, and I know, Elizabeth, we've been keeping you safe and you've been staying inside your bubble. But uh, I think a few weeks ago when you had to come in and take a few things down on, and pack some things up in your office, it was really kind of fun to see you. It was so exciting. It had been months. And we actually have uh, folks on our staff that haven't even uh, met our new officers, uh, the Satterleys. Uh, and, and that's kind of amazing, Jeff, as we turn the corner into 2021, I'm thinking, you know, this thing is moving on to almost a year. Uh, we're not, <laughs> we're in month 10 right now of this. So who would have thought that we would have been doing this this time last year? It's incredible. And, you know, the fact is our, our work is, there's so much synergy in, in our work together. It's so good to be in person to do that. But again, Fortunately, thanks to, you know, the provision of the Army and you're working with us, we've been able to carry on. We've had all our deadlines and we've had some um, uh, challenges with, with doing that. Uh, but we've got this great team and a word that I, I just it, it, that describes. I mean, there's many words that describe our team. But one of the things, Jeff, that I enjoy uh, working with you, our designers, our editors, is pivoting. Uh, you're able to pivot. We're able to uh, turn things very, very quickly. And uh, I thank you for uh, the leadership that you're showing uh, when when we have to do that. Yeah. And I, I appreciate your openness to that too, and your flexibility and your wisdom in helping us, you know, walk through those processes, uh, which is not always easy. 
So as we walk into uh, 2021, uh, we do so with uh, a lot of hope and a lot of uh, anticipation of what's to come. There certainly a, uh, continues to be a lot of uncertainty. But one thing that is certain for us is that we are staying true to the mission of the Salvation Army and the message of the gospel through our magazine. We make no apologies of uh, who we are and what it is that we're about. And this podcast today, we're celebrating our January 2021 issue, uh, which was uh, probably one of the most difficult issues for our team to put together in this remote setting. Um, But we would encourage you, if you haven't got a copy of it yet, you can simply go to, and you can I would encourage you to go there right at the beginning of this podcast, if you can, uh, to www.thewarcry.org, and you can click on the January uh, 2021 link, and you can see the issue right in front of you, and that's what we're going to be describing. We're also going to be doing, uh, in the new year, Elizabeth, we've talked about it, we're experimenting, we think we're going to probably try to do a few more Facebook Live uh, messages uh, during the month uh, discussing different things in the in the war cry. That's right. They're a lot of fun. <laughs> They're a lot of fun. And we, you know, we also would encourage, uh, we'll, we'll be doing a little more promoting and uh, we'd, we'd love to hear your questions and uh, some of your comments. And uh, Jeff, we've been uh, recipient to some very gracious comments about uh, the war cry recently and uh, some very passionate letters that have come to us um, uh, that have come to your desk and my desk in, in regards to how the magazine is has helped people and literally physically have has saved people's lives you know it's funny you you use the phrase that is so important in our work uh, of so what you know what, so what that we're doing this, you know, and the point, as you're saying, is to make a difference in people's lives. And if the gospel is nothing, if not that. Well, I, I'm sitting here in beaming with pride looking at this issue because I think about as we celebrate 140 years of this magazine, it's exciting to know that we're part of a long litany of uh, uh passionate people, starting with George Scott Railton, who had a passion for the written word and uh, started this magazine uh, way back uh, in St. Louis. Um, and there's there's some interesting tidbits about our roots. And I think that's important uh, for our, our listeners and our readers of our magazine to understand that this is not just kind of a ho-hum sort of thing. This magazine has stood the annals of time. If you think about it, the Salvation Army has been in existence for you know over 155 years plus. Um, I know the the actual number kind of runs away from my head, but Jeff, you know, putting a magazine together for uh, keeping the keeping the content for 140 years true to the gospel is really, really a challenge, but it's also a blessing when you sit and you reflect on it. Oh, it's it's incredible. And what I like especially is that we are always forward thinking. We're looking to the future. And as we mm-hmm. reflect on the 140-year um, mark that the Army has been, uh, the war has been in publication continuously, we are still, you, and you are in particular, are looking ahead to what we can do better, what we can include, what content we should be, um, you know, including, and what writers we should be attracting. Well, let's delve into this issue real briefly. Uh, we uh, cover uh, a lot of history uh, in this book. We're grateful to uh, our staff member, Major Jason Swain, and we have a separate podcast that's now available where Major Swain talks about some of the research and some of the nuances of the uh, the early war cry. Uh, Major Swain has just a great historical mind, and we're, we're fortunate to have him, you know, on our staff, and he's um, he's done a great job uh, putting uh, putting together the history of our magazine. 
Yeah, and you know, we should point out, not to belabor it, but our staff did a great job on this issue, as they do for every issue. And people like Elizabeth, uh, you know, we just rely on for their what they bring to us. And you know, each of us has our own uh, outlooks, perspective, perspectives, personalities. You can say for Elizabeth, she has warmth and personality, and <laughs> she she brings that to us every day. Well, yeah, Elizabeth has this exuberant personality that it's like, okay, how many cups of coffee did you have already today? Uh, but, but we know, I think, and Elizabeth celebrating, uh, uh, how many years now? Is it a year and a half or so, or a year? I'm trying to think, I mean, you, you're moving into your, well, yeah, you've moved into your second year uh, with us. Uh, May, 2021 will make two years. That's, so. that's amazing. And well, it's been great. Lot, you've done a lot in that short time. Thanks. <laughs> Well, you have, and, and you continue to do that in, in handling all of our uh, uh, social media and also uh, providing uh, another set of eyes on, on content. So we, we're grateful to you on that. Uh, Jeff, in this issue, we um, kind of talked a little bit about why we use the term war cry. Uh, I mentioned that in my uh uh, editorial a little bit uh there's there's still once in a while people uh kind of rise up and go you know sounds kind of militant and out of touch but really uh this magazine continues to uh proclaim you know we're 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 taking a stand on the evils in the world and and also at the same time we're not just we're not just kind of pointing out the evils we're trying to point to solutions and steps uh, to the so what, as you you were saying, yeah, and you know, one of the one thing that led us to cover this 140 year history in the magazine was to realize that it's this magazine is one of the few that have been a continuous publication um, since 1881. So it has a, a wonderful track record. Let's uh, talk about that for a second, because that this is, uh, from what we understand, this is the second oldest magazine still in public is still in circulation in the United States, correct? Right. Uh, it, it, yeah, it's one of one of several. I'm, you know, there's some debate about which ones are actually prominent, but yeah, it's one of them, one of the few. Uh, and so we wanted to and the army has a great literary tradition and legacy and uh, we wanted to try to do justice to that somehow in this issue. You think of all the great editors, writers, oh my goodness, from General Orsborn to Arnold Brown to Henry Garropy to, you know, all kinds of freelance contributors and artists who contributed to the magazine. But we find, it, we got the chance to go back into our archives and research past issues and oh, through the decades and, found, and we found that there are perennial themes that the Army treats faithfully. And it, the topics represent the diversity and the um, many channels of service and ministry that the Army is engaged in. And also, it's interesting to see how the Salvation Army ties into American culture and celebrates its achievements and comes alongside with themes like building character caring for children, advancing the family, um, having practical ministry to those who are in need. Some of the old issues from the, the Depression era talked about how people on the wrong side of the tracks uh, were you know, suffering from terrible heat waves. So the Army was delivering Salvation Army ice to them and <laughs> to help them cool off. It, that kind of stuff continues today. I mean, the Army distributes fans when heat waves ravage the southwest of the United States in the summer. So it's just a it's just a wonderful legacy that we tried to do some justice to. And uh, from from our perspective, you know, again, we are we're reporting on the Salvation Army in particular, the services and things that are happening nationwide. That's one of the advantages of being at national headquarters. We're not a territory, so we don't have to just focus on a particular geographical location, but we can have a broader scope. And we can see a lot of different things. There's so many different moving parts uh, to this organization, and especially how we we have stepped up as a whole uh, together uh, to serve uh, the the communities. We've watched 
core officers who have had to uh, shut down their services and expand to go online. Uh, many of them, you know, that's a that's a new uh, new frontier for them. Uh, and we applaud those kind of efforts. But it's it's tremendous to see uh, the outpouring of support uh, for the Salvation Army financially and the praise that we get from both inside and outside of the church and continue to see the relevance of uh, our ministry that has deep roots that have been recorded, as you've mentioned, have been recorded in the annals of our, our magazine. We keep doing the most good. And that is our mission as, as in all simple, simple terms, as we share the gospel, the good news of Jesus Christ. Yeah. And, uh, you know, some may consider Christianity and the gospel and the promulgation of it as a pejorative, but of course we know it is not, it is an invitation and each issue of the war cry includes, uh, you know, the ABC, how to receive salvation, how to understand that Jesus is a savior of the world and the Alpha and the Omega. And uh, we unabashedly are so very proud to share that. And we just uh, look to God to bring the magazine and the word of God to where it's needed. We've talked uh, behind the scenes with our staff that we're concerned. Uh, many of us have been affected by people who have been touched by uh, the coronavirus. Uh, I've, I've been um, personally touched by people I, I, that I know and love who have died from this horrible, horrible disease or who have been affected by it and knocked out of service, uh, Salvation Army officers who, you know, have, have been hit hard by this and um, are, are having a hard time recovering uh, from it. We also know that, that the shutdowns uh, and the kind of the, the synergy that is lost in the work environment and the hard times that we've gone through uh, during Christmas. I mean, all of us here on this podcast, we were affected. I mean, we couldn't uh, fully see our families and embrace and, and what over the holidays. So Jeff, we've, we've, we've been talking about one of the things as we go through 2021, we want to have a commitment to healthy living. Can you explain to our listeners what they can anticipate to, to kind of read and see and uh, kind of the track that we're going down with this concept? Yeah, uh, certainly due to the, the, the COVID-19 crisis and the ongoing deprivations people are experiencing, the um, psychological as well as physical and emotional needs and problems are exacerbated. So we want, you know, the army ministers to the whole person, mind, body, spirit. We want to be sure that uh, we are addressing those uh, critical needs and giving people encouragement, direction, and, and acknowledging that, you know, there's a lot of trauma and that, that you know, things like suicide, you know, is is kind of on the upswing in our country. Loneliness is epidemic. Depression, anxiety, things that um, really, you know, sometimes we hold under the surface are are kind of um, coming to the forefront. So we want to make sure that we are addressing those and to help people understand that this God that we serve cares for the individual, tr considers people. God considers people as his children and wants to nourish them. And that's, you know, what we try to be a part of. We have made a commitment and we've talked about this on uh, previous podcasts and we can continue to do it is that we're in search of new writers. And this issue, we introduce two uh, new writers, two uh, Salvation Army officers who uh, in their own ministries, uh, have shown great competence and care uh, in what they do. Uh, we're, we're committed uh, to making sure our, our Latino readers, uh, Latino speaking and reading uh, community uh, has a, a little more opportunity to um, get involved in this uh, magazine than what we've done. So uh, our readers will see a, a, a new uh, format 
and we're calling it the uh, Como Tu y Yo, uh, Like You, Like Me, I believe is a translation. And we're so excited to have a major Ruth New, who her and her husband Richard are the uh, administrators of the ARC Adult Rehabilitation Center in um uh, in Charlotte, North Carolina, we're going to interview uh, Ruth in, in the future, near future here, and we'll be on one of our podcasts. But Jeff, uh, the way that this new section has come out, I think um, I I just really, again, this is something else I'm very proud of what our team has, has done. Do you want to speak uh, at all about this page? Major New was a great find, Carla. It was a great idea to enlist her. She has, you know, a... a she knows the uh, Latin American, South American cultures. Uh, she has, she's of Cuban heritage herself. Um, so she, um, she and she uh, has had journalistic uh, experience in her past, um, and is just uh, you know you, you sense her exuberance uh, in tackling this project. And what she's doing is focusing on different regions in the uh, in latin south america and she knows that those people from those countries have great pride in their culture in their countries and have their unique views and she looks forward to ministering to them through these pages and you know that's such an important audience for us to uh, to uh, address as well another writer is uh captain emmanuel masango captain uh, masango along with his wife jennifer are the core officers of the Sacramento uh, Citadel, and they have a really thriving online ministry uh, during the pandemic. Um, Jeff, I was uh, one of their teachers. I had the privilege of uh, being one of the training officers for the Masangos, and I knew their their love for Jesus and their love for others and, and for the mission of the Salvation Army. And we're introducing him, and we've committed, we've asked him to commit to a year's worth of writing, uh, to our back page. Um, I think that's where we're going to probably have this section, the spiritual formation section uh, land uh, for this next year. But uh, I'm, I'm really thrilled with what I'm seeing from Captain Masango. Yeah, and he's he's tackling the topic of grace in a six-part series to, to, uh, on that, that spiritual formation page. Um, and here again, he's really um, covering the fundamentals of faith and making clear what uh, the true the truth of the gospel is, which uh, we appreciate very much. What's his background, Colonel? Um, uh, he, uh, him, and his family. I mean, he, his brother uh, Terry. We featured uh, Captain Terry Masengo is uh, along with his wife are the core officers of the Pasadena Tabernacle Corps. And they they come from Zimbabwe, and they they uh, have kind of a, a tremendous testimony themselves in uh, the journey that they've made um, to America. Um, so that's kind of like uh, like his background. But uh, uh, the, uh, when I was thinking of a new writer, uh, you know, the the way that that we look at new writers is, you know, we we have different ways. Uh, people that would submit, they contribute to our system. Uh, we'll we'll get word of mouth. We'll have people people say, "Have you considered so and so?" Um, I had I, I've had the privilege of of meeting a lot of officers in in America over the last uh, probably twenty years since since we started, even with uh, when my wife and I started the first Croc Center, uh, we, we started to, to run into more and more people across America. And there were just people that I could sense. Uh, also, looking at social media, we look at what people write on, on their Facebook feeds and Instagram and things of that nature. So, uh, Jeff, you'll, you'll know that one of our mandates is to help to develop writers within the Salvation Army, so I'm I'm really thrilled with uh, what I'm seeing uh, in this issue with our two new writers, and we do want to uh, do a shout out to Lieutenant Colonel Dan Jennings, who's done is continuing his Bible study on Psalm 23, and also you and I are really thrilled with Major Annalise Francis, um, who is our new writer for the Core Values section, and you know she's. She's brilliant. And Elizabeth, I, I don't know if we have her scheduled yet uh, to, 
to come on to the podcast, but we need to get her uh, up here as well. Hmm. Yes. And you know, the, the, one of the great features about the army is it's multiculturalism, it's internationalism and it's inclusiveness and, you know, getting these new writers from different cultural perspectives is just a, a lifeblood. And you know, what amazes me is, you know, our work, Colonel, as you know, it's such a network. It, there's so many people involved. We work together and that extends not just from us, but all the way to those who distribute the magazine, read it, and those who contribute to it in writing and graphic design and phot photography. And we welcome, welcome submissions and ideas from the field. One of my past leaders always said, you know, every one of us has a book within us. And it would be interesting sometime, you know, to, to, to be able to publish um, more books and more things from people, but we, we have the means now with our digital platforms and uh, the, the printed platforms as well. Uh, we're always looking for content and we want to reach out to you. Perhaps you're a listener today and you're thinking, well, you know, I, I kind of have an idea for something or I've, I wrote this little poem. It's, it, it, it's a short thing, or, you know, I've got this great, uh, a set of really, really good, uh, photography. Uh, you know, can I, can I, can I, you know, share that, et cetera. So, uh, I, I just would encourage our listeners and our readers of our magazine to consider being a contributor. Um, Jeff, I ran across, I was, I was cleaning some boxes and things up a closet up over, uh, the Christmas break. And I, I ran into an issue of the war cry. I think it was 1996 and there, there on, on one page is captain Kenneth Hodder writing an article. And on the other page was a uh, captain Tim Foley writing, oh, you know, yeah. <laughs> I, I told the boss about that the other day. I gotta, I gotta bring it in. I gotta <laughs> show you a copy of that. It's like, whoa, that's uh that's kind of amazing. <laughs> so uh, yeah. Anyways, uh, we, we want to just kind of, quickly wrap this up. We we've listed our themes for 2021 in this issue of the war cry. And you can also find our themes online at the warcry.org. We write to themes and the commonality, uh, Jeff, as you referred to uh, before uh, there's, there are, I mean, you, you, you can't write enough about God's love really uh, in, or whatever the theme might be. And, and how the army is expressing that in its many, you know, ways uh, at the uh, local level or at the federal level, uh, in, in the public arena, you know, and dealing with those friends and partners of the army, whether they be leaders in entertainment world or the world of, uh, of politics, et cetera, you know, what they're engaged with the army is as well. So, and we write to themes that we're not limited to themes. We encourage people to contribute what is on their heart. And if they want to share with us an idea, a germ of an idea that they would like feedback on, we're open to that too. And just know that part of the writing process is rejection <laughs> and it happens. <laughs> it happens to the best of us. And uh, so just know that we can't use everything um, but we, we want to encourage, uh, people to, um, you know, step up and, and share what's, what's on their heart. Uh, we did do a survey a long time ago. I think it was Elizabeth. I don't know. Did we try doing that survey last year at this time? Is that when we started all of that? I think it was February through April. Yeah. And, and we've had a lot of uh, obviously different challenges, but there were some things that kind of came out of the survey and we've posted that online. So you can, you can see uh, that there we continue our millennial section. We're actually going to be changing. Uh, well, no, we're not changing the title of that. That was on the, is it perspectives? I forget what, uh, uh, the one major Swain is doing on the 10 questions. It's, um, Oh yeah. 10 questions for, yeah, that's this, that's simply the title of it. Yeah. Anyways, we have, uh, uh, Jenna holiday is, uh, somebody that we're featuring. We have a upcoming podcast with, uh, Jenna. Um, and she uh, talks about, um, her own, uh, advice to young artists and entrepreneurs, uh, and we also encourage you, uh, we're interested in connecting with uh, influencers and celebrities who are aligned with the Salvation Army's mission. 
So if you have some suggestions of, hey, you know, I, I saw such and such on such and such a show or, uh, you know, whatever we think or this celebrity or this sports figure might be it might be interesting, uh, you know, let us know and uh, drop us a note and we'll we'll kind of track that down. I know, Jeff, we're uh, uh, Michelle Caceres is kind of our point person on um, reaching out to the celebrity world and uh, we're having some good success with that and we're having some rejection as well. Right. Um, I think a case in point of the Penta Vegas who are very happy to uh, be interviewed by us and to support the Salvation Army in its uh, Christmas efforts this year too. So yeah, we're, we're interested. And again, we, the, the army celebrates and identifies with the common good in our, in our world. And uh, those people who are helping advance that common good, uh, we, we would, we'd like to associate with them and share their, their thoughts with our readers. Well, we want to thank you for taking a few moments in your new year to give uh, the fight for good podcast. Uh, listen, we encourage you also to read the magazine uh, the magazine is available for subscription for only $1 a month. Uh, that is a great bargain. I mean, what can you get for a dollar these days? I guess you can go to the dollar store, Jeff, and get a few things. But Yeah, soap or something, yeah. Yeah, but the, the quality is, is not there. Everybody loves a bargain. Uh, don't you, Elizabeth? I love a bargain. <laughs> <laughs> your house is full of bargains and it's a it's it's a great thing so you can order and get this magazine coming to you directly um and you could support the salvation army uh by that way you can also go to a local salvation army center uh, and get the magazine jeff we're very proud of our ministry of this magazine to the prisons in this country and you and I are the recipients of so many different uh, letters and, and uh, contacts that we get. It's, it's, it's amazing. It is. And you think about the issues that people who are incarcerated face. And, you know, they, they differ in degree, not so much in kind. You know, we all share uh, the, the certain concerns that are certainly more poignant for those incarcerated, whether it be healing, family, uh, broken ties, etc., that's important, but you know one thing that the survey revealed that we'll share that we're sharing online is that the war cry is used in many different ways, whether it be Bible study or passing it to a friend or using it for personal devotions. I, we are very in, encouraged by the diversity of use, uh, in addition to an outreach tool that the army uses during its ministry program. So we are encouraged by that. Well, I think we also put in this issue uh, in the letter to editor. We're, we're we were grateful. Uh, to a retired commissioner, uh, Steve Hedgren, who um, uh, sh showed us a new distribution strategy of uh, the war cry. So go into the letters, the editor section, and you can see that and see kind of a fun picture that he put uh, with the magazine. We also, I think probably one of the most uh, interesting stories for me in my tenure so far has been the letter that we got of somebody who picked up a war cry, discarded war cry in a, the parking lot of a Walmart and uh, how they found Christ and, uh, and hope uh, through, you know, one of the magazines that was thrown away. Yeah. You, you never know. And uh, of course that, stirs us and we do get the response cards every year of people indicating they did come to know jesus christ as savior through reading the magazine so we say amen to that well that's going to end this episode of the fight for good podcast be sure to subscribe to fight for good wherever you listen to your podcast at and don't forget to follow the war cry at the warcry.org and Peer Magazine, our magazine written for the Z generation, PeerMagMag.org. Follow us on Facebook. We're very active every day on Facebook and on Instagram uh, and on Twitter as well. Uh, so you can, you can find us there as a positive light. But we encourage you to be a part of it. We want to hear from you. And we hope that you and yours has a wonderful, joyous, and productive 2021 filled with hope 
enjoy. We're going to get through all of this, and soon this is all going to be a distant memory for us, but we want you to stay healthy and smart uh, and love one another as God has commanded us to do that. So until next time, this has been the Fight for Good podcast. Bye for now. Subscribe to Fight for Good wherever you listen to podcasts.